Bonjour now. I'm Missionese and I'm here to share with you some DIY crafts using what is ever around your house. This um, project we're gonna do today, hopefully everyone will have the supplies at home and it's based off of a story. But first, um, we're going to do a artistic project that includes watercolors, paper, a white crayon, maybe some images of constellations, and a story. So let me start off by showing you the supplies you're going to need. Some paintbrushes. Any paintbrushes will do. Second, any type of watercolor palette. Old, crusty, new. If you have fancy watercolors, great. If not, all of these lovely dollar stores, some maybe two dollar stores. Water. You're going to need a white crayon. If you don't have a white crayon, maybe you have a white watercolor pencil or a white pencil or a pencil eraser will work. White paint, very important. For our stars, we're gonna need white paint. This is acrylic. If you don't have any white paint that's acrylic or tempera, you can maybe use toothpaste. You're going to need a template to create upon. I have some cardstock, white cardstock. Just white cardstock. If you have watercolor paper, great. If you don't have watercolor paper um, or cardstock, you can use a paper plate. If you don't have the paper plate, you want to really get experimental, you can use some cardboard. Obviously, the stars aren't going to be quite as bright on brown, but anything light and heavy duty is what we want to use. And then, lastly, this is optional, is glitter. My favorite color is glitter or the rainbow. So some sparkles is always great. And if you have any books on astronomy or stars, I have this little Explore the Night Sky book. We're gonna be painting the starry skies today. So anything, or even on your phone, you can Google image some constellations. So these are the supplies you need. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Hello creators, welcome back to Creatality, where we are going to be creating our own reality with what we find around us. So let's get all of our materials all in their places so we can create. Um, this project is a very beginner project. You don't have to know much about anything, but you do have to love stars. So if you know a starry sky, you know that the starry sky has all different shades and gradations of color and darkness. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to want to get your watercolor brushes. Oh, if I didn't tell you, you do need a toothbrush. Don't forget to get a toothbrush, an old toothbrush. If you don't have a toothbrush, I'll give you a, a DIY hack. But the first thing you're going to do, oh, and I forgot, you need a circular tracing object like a paper plate or a U-Bend can lid or maybe a mason jar lid, anything circular, a bowl or a plate. The first thing you're gonna do, have something underneath your workspace. And then, you're gonna get your heavy duty white paper. I'm using cardstock. I don't have watercolor paper. I would love to, but I don't. So we use what we have. If you're using your already circular plate, then you don't need to trace it. So the first step is, you're going to lay out your paper. I have some junk mail that I'm gonna use in case I need to wipe off my brush because paper towels and toilet paper are a commodity right now. And the first thing you're gonna do, get your white paper there. I'm gonna use a coffee can lid. Get that white crayon out and you just trace out a nice big wide circle. Go around it a couple of times so it creates a nice wax barrier so that watercolor doesn't flow into the other part of your page. And there we go. And now we're going to start to build our universe, our little tiny universe. So for this, you want to start off with light colors. And the reason why you start off with light is because we're going to be building up in two phases of this. So open up your watercolors, find the lightest color that you have, some pinks, some violets, not yellows because that will turn green. So I'm going to start off with some pinks. 
I would recommend doing a nice soft layer of water on your brush without any color around so that it gets really, really milky, like the Milky Way, and just start adding color. I'm adding some nice light pink here. Now remember, it's chaos in the universe, so you don't want anything too formal. You're not trying to color in anything. You're just trying to add pigment. So I'm adding in my pink. Now I'm gonna add in maybe some light blue. And don't be afraid if it blends, because that's what colors do. Some nice sky blue on top of that. Sky blue, we're going from lightest to darkest. So in this phase, we're gonna do two coats. The first is just nice coats of light magenta, some hot pink candy. We're basically doing like cotton candy colors right now. And you'll see. And it's okay to have some of the light white shine through your paper because that can be where the nebulas form. And that's where the light comes through. So we're gonna do one nice coat of some hot pink magenta, some sky blue, ocean blue, and You'll see it just looks kind of like very nebulous, kind of fluffy. If you want to really add on to it, make it rich, go back over where you added. And don't be afraid to go back in between two different watercolor palettes because they have different chemicals to make up their blue. So we're just doing lighter colors. Okay, you can see where I'm at. How quick was that? In my circle, we're gonna let that dry for a few minutes. And while that dries, we're going to hear the story of where this Starry Sky Lesson project emerged from. Um, and it's called a story called The Legend of the Dipper. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Hello creators. So at this point, our tiny universe is gonna be drying. We need to let it dry for about five more minutes so we can put our next layer on. And I forgot to tell you what we're making. I don't wanna give you any images ahead of time because I don't want you to have to worry about how yours needs to turn out. Um, but this project is about starry skies and it's about constellations. And so this lesson was inspired by a story called The Legend of the Dipper. So while our tiny universe dries and before we add in more of our starry skies, I'd like to share with you the story. Um, it's an old story, it's a couple hundred years ago, it even goes farther back. Um, but this version is from 1899. And so I'm going to read this to you. Um, this would probably work for, I would think, children from kindergarten all the way up through sixth grade, unless you're a child like me at heart and you love stories. So this is for all of us. So this is called The Legend of the Dipper, and it's retold by J. Berg Eisenwein and Marietta Stockard. There had been no rain in the land for a very long time. It was so hot and dry that the flowers were withered, the grass was parched and brown, and even the big strong trees were dying. The water dried up from the creeks and the rivers, the wells were dry, the fountain stopped bubbling. The cows, the dog, the horses, the birds, and all of the people were so thirsty, everyone felt uncomfortable and sick. There was one little girl whose mother grew very ill. Oh, said the little girl, if I can only find some water for my mother, I'm sure she will be well again. I must find some water. So she took a tin cup and started out in search of water. By and by, she found a tiny little spring away high up on a mountainside. It was almost dry. The water dropped, dropped ever so slowly from under the rocks and the little girl held her cup carefully and caught the drops. She waited and waited a long, long time until the cup was full of water. Then she started back down the mountainside, holding the cup very carefully, for she did not want to spill a single drop. On the way, she passed a poor little dog. He could hardly drag himself along he was panting for breath and his tongue hung from his mouth because it was so dry and so parched. 
Oh, you poor little dog, said the little girl. You are so thirsty. I can't pass you without giving you a few drops of water. If I give you just a little, there will still be enough for my mother, she said. So the little girl poured some water into her hand and held it down for the little dog. He lapped it up quickly, and then he felt so much better that he frisked up and barked and it seemed almost to say, thank you, little girl, woof, woof. And the little girl didn't notice, but her tin dipper cup had changed into a silver dipper cup, and it was just as full of water as it had been before. She thought about her mother and hurried along as fast as she could. When she reached home, it was late in the afternoon and almost dark. The little girl pushed the door open and hurried up to her mother's room. When she came into the room, the old servant who helped the little girl and her mother, who had been working all day long taking care of the sick woman, came to the door. She was so tired and so thirsty that she couldn't even speak to the little girl. Do give her some water, said the girl's mother. She has worked hard all day and needs it much more than I do. So the little girl held the cup to the servant's lips and the old servant drank some of the water. She felt stronger and better right away and she went over to the mother and lifted up her cup. The little girl didn't notice, but the cup had changed into a golden dipper cup and was just as full as water as it was before. Then she held the cup to her mother's lips and her mother drank and drank. Oh, she felt so much better. And when she had finished, there was still some water left in the cup. The little girl was just raising up to her own lips to drink when there came a knock at the door. The servant opened and there stood a stranger. He was very pale and covered with dust from traveling. I am thirsty, he said, won't you give me a little water? The little girl said, Why, certainly I will. I am sure that you need it far more than I do. Drink it all. The stranger smiled and took the dipper cup in his hand, and as he took it, it changed into a diamond dipper. He turned it upside down, and all the water spilled out and sank into the ground, and where it spilled, a fountain bubbled up. The cool water flowed and splashed, enough for the people and all the animals in the whole land to have all the water they wanted to drink. As they watched the water, they forgot the stranger, but presently when they looked, he was gone. They thought they could see him just vanishing in the night sky. And there in the sky, clear and high, shone the diamond dipper. It shines up there yet still and reminds people of the little girl who is kind and unselfish. It is called the Big Dipper. And that's the story that inspires our starry sky painting for today. So I chose to do So, that story was about the Big Dipper. You may choose another constellation, but that gives you a reminder of where this project comes from. So after the reading of that story, hopefully your first layer of light colors for your tiny universe should be somewhat dry. So go ahead and test that. Mine seems a little, little bit dry. You could go longer if you wanted to. You could get a blow dryer, depends how speedy you want. But the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our watercolor brush. By the way, I didn't tell you, but I'm using a bigger brush because it, it helps to um, create larger areas of hue rather than little tiny chunks which is what we kind of want, but any brush will do. Just make sure you get a good, not too much water on there. We're gonna go darker. So now we did the sky blue, we did the cotton candy pinks. Now I'm gonna go for some deeper blues. And so now you're just gonna keep going back over. The key thing I want to try to remind you is keep a center in your sphere that you're not gonna add any darker pigment to. So just kind of color block around it. Here's some dark blue. Um, here's some purple, because we're going darker now. Don't be afraid to blend. Here's some purple, some dark, dark purple. Okay. Gonna just add some darker hues, and with the water, they're gonna blend. We want them to blend. That's what 
hues are. That's what color is. Color is always composed of multiple hues. So I'm just going back over, thickening it up, thickening up, thickening up. Go. Don't be afraid to go around the center. I'm just saying you want to make sure that you leave some illumination in the center. Okay? And towards the end, you want to try to get as much water off your brush as you can to really go a little bit dark. Don't be afraid. Dip in that black. Of course, my black has some glitter in it. And don't be afraid. Add a little bit, little just tufts of black, like smoke from a train. Just going to darken it up. Okay? I'm adding some dark black around. If it gets too solid, just add some water. Don't be afraid to go around and just thicken that up. Um, if it's not dark enough, I want mine a little bit darker. Add a little bit more black, a little bit more blue. Just play with it. Have fun with those hues. Oh my gosh, the color of the night sky is endless. It's endless. So just thickening that up. And now, while well, I have that thickened up, I'm gonna go around just with some water in the front, in the center, okay? Have fun with it. Get deep, get indigo. Some more black. You could do three layers of this if you wanted to and had some time, but for the purpose of our video, I'm just gonna do this with two layers. But the more amount of time, if you were to go and add layer by layer of color, it would give you a really beautiful jewel veil effect. If you find you have stray hairs like I do, get a wet brush and just go back and pick those up. There you go. And another one. Oh, the bells really like this project. Okay. So, okay. So we're free. And I'm going to add just a little bit more black because I'm not afraid of the black. I'm not afraid of the dark. Don't be afraid of the dark because when the dark is, there's stars. Okay? So see, at this point, it just looks like a real beautiful nebulous type of sphere. So we're going to let this dry for a few more minutes. I would say another five minutes and at this point I want you to start asking yourself um, what constellation what group of stars do you want in your picture um, I'm going to show you a picture of the one that I chose that has to do with the story that we just read together called the legend of the dipper but this is where you have to ask am I making this for myself am, am I making this for someone else to light up their life so for this, I wanted to make the Big Dipper, and I love astronomy. Um, so you need, at least at this point, while this is drying, I have a little constellation book that I got from one of my astronomy classes. Start looking up a constellation that really speaks to you. Maybe you're a Gemini and wanna look up the Gemini sign. Maybe you really love Orion. Um, but at this point, you wanna really look up your constellation. So at this point, I would say stop, go in your Google Images search, and you can search, let's say Taurus, let's say Aries, that's my, that's my sign. Um, for me, this is what I did for the Big Dipper. So you really wanna take a look at what constellation that you're gonna to wanna to put in your tiny universe, because we're gonna be putting that next. And you're gonna to wanna to practice drawing, you need to count out how many big stars are in that. So at this point, I'm gonna pause, allow this to dry, and I'm gonna have you do your homework and find the constellation that you're gonna be doing. And then I'll meet you back in, let's say, a couple of infinity seconds, all right? And then by that time, this should be dry. Okay, see you soon. Hello, creators. Quick uh, quick tip, if you haven't already hit pause on your video, um, please do. Hit pause, go and look up the constellation that you're gonna to wanna to do, because that's gonna be part of our next, our next step. So hit pause. Go look for the constellation, let your little tiny sphere dry, and I'll see you in two and two. Hi, stargazers. All right, so we're back. And hopefully you selected the constellation, or the grouping of stars, as they call them, that we're going to do. Now here's the fun part. Um, something I wanted to mention to you, if your color is bleeding outside of your sphere, that's okay. Um, it's organic, we're gonna 
we can cut cut it out afterwards. But the next thing you're going to need is your white paint. Um, like I said earlier, if you don't have white acrylic paint or tempura, um, you can use toothpaste. You want to get a little bit of water and a little bit of white paint. And if you can use my coffee can, this is going to be what I'm going to use for my mixing. Shake up your white paint. Get your toothbrush, an old toothbrush. This is you're not going to want to rebrush your teeth with this. Um, if you don't have a toothbrush, I'll show you another technique. But for right now, we're going to start scattering stars, and we're creators. So we are made of stars. You know that we are really made of stars, and we'll become stars once again. So I just doled out a little bit of my white paint in there. I'm going to dip my toothbrush just a little bit in my paint water get a little bit of that excess off and I'm just gonna do a little scrub-a-dub-dub -dub in here see these little white I got lots of chunks this is donated paint so now we're gonna spray some stars so we have our white paint on our toothbrush we're gonna turn it bristles down towards our sphere with your little index finger you're just gonna start spraying just do a little flick little flick Little flick, little flick, little flick, little, oh, look at all those stars. Oh my gosh, I just created galaxies. Oh my gosh, okay, so there's our stars. Oh, this has a lot of stars, okay. Now, woo, okay, a little bit on that. Just dip that, no worries. Now, once you have your constellation in place, in your mind, what you're going to make, you're gonna to have to create the sculpt of that star. Grouping. So you can do it in two different ways. You can either get, if you have multiple brushes, find your thinnest brush and get the back, the back of your brush. And you're gonna go down. And so you've looked at your constellation. You know how many stars are in that group. I'm sticking with the dipper. So the Big Dipper has seven stars. So at this point, you have your background of all the tiny stars, and now I'm gonna do my big one. So, oh, there's a big chunk right there. That can be in the nice start of the handle. So there's one, two. So if you were doing an Aries, if you were doing something else, take a look at that. Follow the guidance, or you can actually use your brush. Just be careful with your brush. You wanna twirl it so it's just a tiny drop. One, two, three, press it down, maybe spin it a little bit, four, five, I have freckles, so this is like, you know, I deal with little dippers every day. Big dippers. Six. Seven. So just to review, you can go back over one more time. My constellation, I'm doing the big dipper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If it's not that obvious, um, and the other thing is, say say you have a, a star that you don't really like, it's just too blurbly, go back, dip your brush in some water, and you can just cover up that star. I'm not really liking the corner of that dipper, of the dipper cup, so that's okay. I just cover it up, I go back in, I'm gonna grab another brush. If it's too wet, it's gonna bleed, so you don't want too much water for when you do your your final points. That's better. That's better. And if you have toothpaste and you don't have white paint, then just make a nice little paste of it. But if you press down and do a little spin, it makes a nice little dot. Nice little dot. Nice little dot. Okay, so you see we have the connect the dots. We're basically doing connect the dots. La 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 la. So now that that's done, you're going to get the thinnest brush possible that you have. Okay. If you don't have a thin brush, you can use a toothpick. This is the thinnest brush I have. Now we're going to connect them. 
and we're just going to connect the dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I love sevens. And there's my Big Dipper. This is the point that if you want to get a little bit more creative, I'm a huge fan of glitter, of course. And so I have a big tube of silver glitter. And I'm just going to go right back over, connecting those dots, go right on top of that, just like some glitter glue. One, two, three. Spread out those little jelly globs. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Now I'm gonna get the end of my paintbrush one more time. Just do one little pink, 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 pink. Now, if those stars see this corner, that's not so pronounced. I'm not too happy with that. So I'm going to go back in, add a little bit more. A little dry. And out there. And then we have the constellation of our stars, guys. The legend of the dipper. What I would do now after this dries again, you can cut it out and you can hole punch it and hang it up. Otherwise, you can get some colored pencils or you can grab another paintbrush. And if you're making this for someone else, star eye. And there you have it. Your tiny stair of starry skies. What starry sky did you make? I want to see. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed. See you soon.